Salutations, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. So in this video, I'm going to ask, what is fascism? Fascism and fascist, these are terms that uh, one hears bandied about on a daily basis. So all too often, they are a boo word. It really means, I don't like you. It's a thought terminating cliche. People are branded with these terms to delegitimize their opinions and make people think, oh, well, I don't even have to consider what this chap is saying. He's simply devilish. But uh, I, I think it's worth considering what fascism really is. So a lot of people don't know. As I say, they consider it just political mudslinging or they foolishly think if someone's labeled that, then, then it really is accurate. So um, it's almost universally reviled, the term fascist or fascism. So I'm going to explain what fascism actually is. So fascism, as we know it, emerged a century ago, almost exactly. Right after the First World War, the terms fascist and fascism were coined, though they had occasionally been used before that. But they certainly popularized right after the Great War for Civilization, as it was called. So um, in Italy, the fascist party was founded and it was led by Benito Amilcare Mussolini. Um, and so fascists, they looked back to ancient Rome and they saw the lictors, these judges had, they would carry a symbol, um, which uh, was a bundle of rods um, with an ax through the middle. And there was a significance to the symbolism here is in that um, a single rod could be taken out and snapped very easily, but the bundle was much more difficult to break and it indicated the state and the right to punish, as in beat you with a rod or indeed kill you with the axe. So that was so um, there is, is strength in unity was part of the message of uh, fascism. And it's all about national unity, as in suppressing um, dissent. It's really anti-individualist. So you could read the uh, book by Mussolini, The Principle and Institu Principles and Institutions of Fascism. There was a wide measure of opportunism to it. Mussolini said that he really felt disdain for isms, per se. And to some extent, he was cutting, cutting his cloth to suit the situation. He was a former socialist, very prominent one in Italy, said he was an anti-patriot when Italy invaded Libya shortly before the First World War and was indeed editor of Il Popolo d'Italia, the people of Italy, the foremost journal of socialist opinion in Italy at the time. I shan't go too much into its autobiography. But um, in the First World War, he embra embraced um, uh, hypernationalism. So... Uh, Fascism is totalitarian or it is nothing. Mussolini is the one who coined the word totalitarianism. So the total state, as he um, explicated it, everything within the state, nothing without the state. So everything had to be state run, state controlled. So it's all about regimentation. Now, racism is a core component of, uh, of fascism. Uh, remember, by this time, Darwin's um, findings had been broadly accepted by all but um, religious fundamentalists. And people misapplied that to the human race in assuming the different races of our species were different subspecies, which of course is bunkum. And um, the uh, notion that there was survival of the fittest applied to us and there was such a thing as a master race. So certain ethnicities should acquire mastery over others and, and so forth. And that was moral and all the rest of it. So <clears throat> though uh, the fascists in Italy, they initially um, were deeply conflicted about their attitude to the Roman Catholic Church. And that was the religious authority at the time in that country. But uh, later they embraced religious mania. And you'll see this later on. And so it's a, sometimes a quasi religious mania. So quasi meaning like as if in Latin. So um, they sometimes pose as being anti-establishment, being anti-elite, uh, railing against the affluent and saying, we don't like these people, they're snobbish and effete. They um, are too cosmopolitan. They take their manners and fashions from other countries. But um, then they often become rather pro-establishment. Pro certainly the, the state, in terms of the civil service, the police, the judiciary, will certainly co-opt them or else eliminate them. Um, 
So fascism has the cult of the personality about it, exhorting the leader to a ludicrous degree, insisting that his image be more or less omnipresent, suggesting that he's imbued with some semi-mystical uh, sense of judgment, he's guided aright and so forth, and that um, blind obedience is somehow virtuous. So militarism is a large uh, aspect of the fascist outlook, and not just the militarization of the well, not just the armed forces being like that, but the broader militarization of society, as I said, regimentation, believing in, in uniforms, in conformity, and so forth, in um, um, the iron will of the leader and people just obeying that, uh, following orders, uh, and um, all the rest of it. Um, believing in, in huge meetings. Big is beautiful. Um, they hold ele elections, but these are obviously simply charades. They go through the motions of elections. Um, but the results are decided in advance and the opposition are not allowed to campaign. Pretty soon it becomes a one-party state and um, they certainly don't encourage people to think for themselves. They don't think that there should be um, many schools of thought contending. Uh, so they muzzle the media. The um, press is certainly to be an organ of the state um, because it can't be just independent. So fascism only started in the 20th century because it was an era of mass politics. Uh, so it's appealing to the working class, to those without much money, without a high standard of education and so on. And it needs the mass media as um, a loud hailer. So in those days it needed the newspapers and uh, Western European countries where fascism started had close to 100% literacy. Obviously telegraphs to transmit news almost instantaneously, railways to transport um, newspapers very rapidly and then the radio. And these days, obviously, um, uh, fascistic notions can metastasize through social media, and notably, they've been very swift in the uptake with capitalizing upon Facebook, Twitter, and so forth. Um, so authoritarianism is a uh, important strand of, uh, of fascism, the belief that the state should really have overweening authority over um, everyone, and should intrude into every facet of your existence, it can all be micromanaged. So they were, are proud of their intolerance. Indeed, Adolf Hitler, surely the most um, prominent fascist of all time, said that when his uh, opponents critiqued him, saying that you're intolerant, he said, I must agree with these gentlemen about one thing, we are intolerant. What is so German about having 15 or 20 political parties? They don't wanted one political party, so to straitjacket everybody into it, a single outlook on life. Um, they certainly don't believe in having a Rechtsstaat, they don't believe in having an independent judiciary, and they think that judges should be just, um, how to put it, well, really, servants of the executive. And um, you may have heard of Rudolf Hess, who was um, a cabinet minister under Adolf Hitler, perhaps his closest confidant, saying that um, the highest legal principle in German jurisprudence is love for der Führer, as in the, the leader. Remember in Italy, Mussolini was actually um, il presidente dello consiglio, which is roughly the prime minister in the Anglosphere, but he preferred to be known by the title il duce, leader, and to be greeted with ecstatic cries of duce, 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 meaning leader. And that's why Hitler, though he was chancellor and latterly also president, preferred to be known as der Führer. And to be outside any constitutional constraints. So um, they have a legislature really as uh, something which is neutered, and it's simply an audience for which the charismatic leader can deliver his orations to and be assured of the most rapturous applause to all his applause lines. On cue, they will be giving him standing ovations. So the uh, lawmaking body will be a rubber stamp, seldom meet. There'll be no separation of powers the judicial, executive, and legislative branches will be more or less amalgamated, and um, it will be the, the ruler's word is law. Um, so he will rule by fiat. Decrees will be issued. There will be no debate per se. The constitution will be held in abeyance, um, though possibly nominally still extant, um, but in, in practice, uh, widely deviated from. Um, anyway... So there will be often emergency legislation and uh, fascists often come to the fore at time of um, an economic meltdown, some sort of political crisis, mass unemployment, 
a threat to the life of the nation insofar as there's a large uh, insurrection or a war or something like that, when people feel, well, we're going to have to downgrade our civil liberties, habeas corpus needs to be suspended temporarily, and these temporary measures have a habit of becoming permanent. So um, fascists have no truck with uh, um, civil liberties. Um, they, they sometimes ham up these crises, pretend they're worse than they are, really manufacture um, these uh, existential perils. Now, expansionism is often um, something which accompanies fascism. The belief that you should gain more land is very much about blood and soil, as one of the Nazi slogans was, as in blood, the ethnicity. They really believe that we're a very, very extended family. Of course, that's um, utter hogwash. Now, my cousins, not particularly close to, close to them, first cousins, second cousins, I wouldn't know most of them from Adam. Why should I care that much about people who I share a bit of DNA with, who my phenotype is somewhat similar to? Why should I prefer that person over somebody who's a bit different from me, whose facial features are somewhat dissimilar, whose skin tone is uh, not, as cl not very close to mine? I don't have to dislike this person or like someone who looks that like me. Really, it's, it's for the birds. But for simpletons, this is convincing. So irredentism is part of it. Um, remember those, Italia irredenta, as in meaning unredeemed in Latin, irredenta, wishing to gain back the Tyrol from the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So remembering lost land, wherever that might be, the case of Irish ultranationalism, it's Northern Ireland. In the case of, let's say, Argentine hypernationalism, it might be the Falklands or Las Malvinas as they prefer to call it. In the case of German ultranationalism, it was Austria, or the Sudetenland, and so forth, and on and on. And many countries have an example of this because the frontiers of nation states have waxed and waned. So this 19th century notion of the nation state, and really this is um, um, the nation state on steroids when we come to fascism, and they consider that uh, national territory and pride in one's folk are exceedingly important. Um, they are, tend to be very anti-feminist, to promote natalism. They want to maximize the number of births. As Mussolini said, that uh, um, maternity for the female is like um, war making for the male. So they very much believe in the division of roles between the genders. They tend to be violently um, homophobic, send uh, homosexuals to concentration camps and so forth. The, the Nazis in Deutschland had them wearing these pink triangles. Calling they were saying they were asocials. They detested lesbians, not just male homosexuals, lesbians wearing black triangles. So anti-intellectualism is very much encouraged by the Nazis. Though yes, they had some education. They downgraded university education. They overemphasized PE. They history was taught through a very so-called patriotic um, medium. They were very against objectivity and believed in um, glorifying the nation, in um, inflating its victories, in de-emphasizing or denying its defeats, and suggesting it was moral, that um, if uh, the enemy commits a crime, it's even worse than you might imagine. If we commit a crime, then in fact it is a triumph, and so on. So really, um, dispassion and a uh, neutral and mature approach to analyzing events went out the window. They like to have monster meetings and they very much promote emotionalism. They discourage rationalism um, and detach judgment. They, you know, as they say, give me a child uh, for seven years and he's mine. So they believe in youth movements, getting children in very young, indoctrinating them, brainwashing them, constantly bombarded with certain fascistic memes in school, in the youth movement, at home, through the mass media, um, and so forth, and wanting people to be wearing uniforms most of the time, not just the armed forces, but people going about their work, those who are members of this political movement, and uh, people in various youth movements and so forth, different sections of the uh, national movement, and it really is national, that's what it's about, natus, as in birth, it's about ethno-nationalism, only Brazilian um, fascism, integralism, was genuinely non-racist. Um, so there's a, there's a streak of megalomania to it. The madness of greatness, size, big is beautiful, more land, more people, more weapons, buildings, bigger. Um, so everything on a gargantuan scale to 
exalt the state, the might of that, to uh, make the individual seem puny, completely unimportant. You have no individuality. You're subsumed in this uh, nation of millions. Um, so it's very much about braggadocio, egomania, especially for this leader who is supposedly gifted with um, some exceptional grace for leadership, some nous. As I said about Mussolini, he could smell the right decision to take. So that um, every duty, no matter how ever humble, is serving this uh, cause. As the German song said, the flag is greater than death. Um, Mussolini said, remember you're doing your duty, even if you are only standing guard over a barrel of petrol. However trivial your duty is, you are saving this great nation. And obviously it goes back to ancient Rome, the semi-mythical past, uh, recalling that um, uh, days of splendor. So um, they don't care about economics as such, different economic systems. They would sometimes spout for socialist rhetoric, um, don't care about it very much, not, not even anti-socialist, persecuted the socialists. Often they found themselves collaborating with established elements, with big business and so forth, with uh, the property the interest and the money the interest. So they squash trade unions. They um, detest internationalism. The Brotherhood of Man is anathema to them. So they do everything on a grand scale. There are various projects to do with the renovating infrastructure, upgrading things, building things, but really anything to emphasize size, greatness. Um, so they get along quite fairly well with corporations who get some fat contracts for them, um, but they, they um, are fairly agnostic on whether there should be a planned economy or whether there should be left a free enterprise. They're willing to have a melange of the two. So um, to call them socialist is inaccurate. It's not downright false. Um, they are not for or against, really. They sometimes profess um, compassion for the needy and meet the working class at a level. Some of them are genuinely working class and would have some welfare programs. But they don't want the state ownership of all private property, despite sometimes um, lambasting the boss class. So they feel scorn um, towards multinational organisations, the League of Nations and subsequently the United Nations, so pulling out of these agreements, saying that uh, they're just namby-pamby, they're limp-wristed, they're pinko liberal and so on, they don't get things done. So um, fascists really have complete disrespect for the rule of law. They would take a very much a Alexander the Great attitude to the Gordian knot, very decisive action. Um, so they, um, glory and violence, war is their only hygiene, as some would say, and they're rather macabre looking back to the fall of previous wars and um, almost worshipping the people who get killed in current wars. Um, so it's quite sick, their, their death cult. Remember um, in the Third Reich, there were the Totenkopfverbände wearing the, uh, a skull symbol on their hats. Obviously it was redolent of the death's head hussars in the First World War. Or um, some of the Italian fascists having a, a skull symbol with a dagger between its teeth, no me frego, I am not afraid, and things like that. Um, so they would have uh, nothing but contempt for the notion of mercy, for rights. They hate the disabled. They're all about physical fitness, machismo. This um, is um, a most uh, overstated form of toxic masculinity. So I hope I've given you a flavor of what um, fascism is about. And the thing is, it's not uh, hermetically sealed. Obviously, it shares um, a frontier with some other ideologies. There are certain commonalities between it, it and socialism and conservatism, even liberalism, perhaps. They tend not to be enthusiastic about monarchy, not necessarily against it on principle. Um, and uh, people who are in fascist movements have previously belonged to mainstream political parties. When fascist parties cease to exist, these members join various other mainstream parties. So don't misuse it. Don't weaponize this term just simply to slander those whom you happen not to see eye to eye with. Uh, that is a highly irresponsible, uh, highly irresponsible and puerile. Um, and wh why does any people support fascism? It's like a byword for evil these days. But uh, um, yes, fascist regimes have been ghastly. They have carried out crimes, uh, most the most abominable kind of crimes on absolutely 
unimaginable scale. Genocide. It doesn't get worse than that. But that's not to say that fascists never did anything positive. Grow up. Face facts. Yes, they did evil. Horrific evil. They also did a little bit of good. Why would anyone support them? Not just a microscopically small proportion of the population. Why would significant numbers of people support them in various countries? Otherwise, decent people do this. Well, they chose to look upon its virtues, to close their eyes to its vices. When they had to recognize its vices, said, well, they're kind of, kind of trivial, and the other side do bad too, and they're necessary, and so on. They felt they're threatened by other ideologies, such as communism, um, and uh, so forth. And by then, they were committed, and it got a bit too far. So, obviously, there was the Third Reich, there was fascist Italy. In, in um, Hungary, there was a nakedly fascistic regime. Arguably, the National Legionary State in Romania, briefly, in Slovakia, was the sort of a kind of Catholic fascism. Um, in um, El Estado Novo, in Portugal, from the 30s to the 70s, could be seen as fascist, possibly ultra-conservative. Likewise, in Spain, semi-fascist, in league with Falange, a genuinely fascist movement, and then uh, reactionaries. So uh, it's not that clear-cut who exactly is fascist. Some might tick some of the boxes, but not others. And um, almost everybody would agree with a few of the fascist things they want. Regaining lost territory, sometimes that's a reasonable thing to do. Suspending civil liberties when there's a grave danger, occasionally that's the right thing to do. Building up the armed forces, it might be the right thing to do under certain circumstances. Restricting freedom of expression, sometimes that is necessary and proportionate. Things like that. Emergency, emergency legislation. Gaining more territory might be all right, depends on the situation. Maybe feminism has gone too far. Maybe should, we should encourage people to have more children. Youth movements, and they're, they're not all pernicious. Um, whatever, you know, big uh, projects, the state to improve things, that's not always disastrous. Um, caring for the poor, that isn't such a bad thing. Some of the things on the, these their own are amoral or even praiseworthy. Um, so where else has, has fascism existed? Arguably some of the juntas in Latin America, some authoritarian states in Southeast Asia, you could claim, and so on. So these are the hallmarks of fascism. You could have a checklist. And um, there are more governments than, than um, would care to admit it are like this. And because it's just um, a general insult, people tend to offend others by saying they are fascist even if this government itself actually is fascistic, um, not all the way. So there we are. I've tried to give you a reasonable definition of fascism, an explanation for its causes, and um, a, a list of criteria that you can look at to try and determine whether a political movement is fascist or not.